एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग वेलकम टू द क्लास सो टुडेज सेशन इज अबाउट ऑल अबाउट ऑल अबाउट बार ग्राफ्स डेटा हैंडलिंग सो बेसिकली फर्स्ट टेल मी वन थिंग Why are we studying this chapter? Why are we studying this chapter topic? Is it because it's basically a part of your syllabus? It's given in your mathematics book. That's why we are just doing it. That is also that is one reason. But do you know that how important this topic is? What is actually the usage of bar graphs? Why do we actually have this in our school syllabus? There must be some reason. See, whatever we are studying in the books, this that all that is all that is there is some reason behind it, right? Yes. Hi, Advika, Bhavya. एस नागेंद्रा श्वेता यस हाय पलक रफीक अहमद यस पपिया सो वी जस्ट मेट ट्वेंटी मिनट्स बिफोर यस हाय पपिया श्वेता स्टडी विद हर्ष रुद्राक्षी अनुषा निरंजना ऑल राइट स्नेहा सेज इट्स हेल्प्स इन बिजनेसेस एब्सोल्युटली व्हाट एल्स सर कोविड Kibha, Kevin, Intellectual World, Rakesh Rai Singh, very excited. Calculating data, yes, calculating data, or we can say comparing data, especially when the data there is a lot of variation in in the data, then it becomes a lot more easier to compare. Yes, thank you, Palak, Anahita. See, I remember your name, Raj. That's what I said in the previous session also, right? Hi, Kibha, Kevin. I think you are new here. Yes, Har Simran, hi, Devyakshu. All right, all right. So I'm now, I'm now. I have to remember a lot more, more new names today. Ah, uh, yes, Palak, you can address me whichever you, way you want to. Correct, Sneha. So you guessed it right. Yes. So this bar graph, it's not only used in mathematics; it's used in accounting also, statistics as well, economics also. Yes, S Nagendra. It is used to show the comparison, like you know, the data of the COVID cases as well. So you can see that from our real life examples also, right? They have a usage. That's why we are studying these topics. So before I tell you something, before you start learning any topic, first think about this thing: Why are we actually learning it? Where is it actually used? All right, all right. So I think yes. All right. So let's get started. Let's not waste any more time here. But before I properly formally start the session, let me just walk you through the flow of the session, like what all topics I'm going to discuss today. So first, we will be talking about what bar graph is. Yes. What is it? Let's understand that first. Then we will be talking about the different types of bar graphs, and then we will see how we can group the data using a bar graph. And at the end, we are going to have a poll question. So in the entire session, be attentive. Yes, you please stay focused because I want each one of you to give the right answer at the end. Gun Gun is one of the student who regularly comes for the class. So maybe she might be busy with something. Maybe something uh, she might have some urgent work. Yes, correct, Har Simran. It helps to represent the data in a proper manner. Helps to increase, find the increase and decrease in population. That too, uh, in a lot more easier way. Yes, absolutely, Rakesh. All right, all right. So before I start, I think this is something that we generally talk about. But for the ones who are coming first time for the class, so this is about the buy two classes, two teacher advantage. The link for that is given in the description. You can go check that out after this class. So the best thing is you can choose the class timings at your convenience, and that too for whichever class you take want to take the trial for. And before you subscribe to the package, let me just tell you what all you are getting in the, uh, getting here. So first thing is live classes by India. Top teachers and yes, two teacher model as I said. Doubt clarification sessions would be there. There would be multiple mock tests would be taken so that we can check on your progress. Yes, evaluation is important. Har Simran says has tried this. I hope you are liking it. Yes, and personal attention from the teacher and one-on-one -on -one guidance by the personal mentor. First of all, tell me the students who are regularly come for the coming for the classes. How many of you have actually have actually checked it out? That's okay, Bhavya. But recorded sessions are there, right? Whenever it's possible, you can come for the live class. Otherwise, recorded sessions are also there, so you can watch it. You picked up maths chapter. Wow! So I hope you liked it. Shristi Singh, she has checked that. Rakesh, Papiya, yes, Sneha. 
Uh, Rudrakshi, wow. Yes, Mayank. All right, so a lot many students have actually tried it, yes? It's okay, Krishti. If you have missed the last class, what you can do is recorded session. You can check that later once we are done with the sessions, today's sessions, yes? Hari Anuj Singh has also tried it. I hope you all are liking it, yes? Quickly thumbs up, smileys, if you actually enjoyed it. Lakshmi, Ashish, Palak, yes? All right, all right. So the best thing is all this you can try for as low as rupees 199. It's that cheap. Trust me, sometimes I feel that why it wasn't there at our times. Lots of smiles and thumbs up I can see here. I'm glad that you all are actually liking it. Yes, amazing. All right, so for the, for the others who haven't tried it yet, link is in the description. Go check that out after this class. And yes, I hope you all have joined the Telegram channel. Lot of benefits you are getting here. The session, sessions that we do here, the session PDFs are shared on the Telegram. Yes, a lot many times it happens, right? When you, are, you have seen the session, but sometimes obviously after a few hours or one or two days, you are going to forget things. Not the entire thing, but yes, actually some of them. I'm pretty sure that nobody can remember the entire, like 100% of it, right? So in that case, these session PDFs will be really helpful for you. And revision questions, some interesting Sunday facts, homework questions, some fun quizzes, and yes, session updates are also shared there. Yes. Students who have joined it, they would know that a lot of stuff is actually shared on Telegram. Wow. Thank you, Mayank. All right. All right. And if you feel that these sessions are actually helpful, please do share it in your school groups as well. Yes. Quickly, you can share it in your other groups, your friends groups, school groups, whichever you have, so that others can also take the advantage of it. These sessions are free, of course, right? It's not charging anything, so anybody can watch it. All right, all right. Not joined, Esna Gendra. So, link is there. You can see in the chat section also, link is posted here. All right, all right. Yes, Trishti, yes, please do that. Sneha is saying told to four students. Yes, please do uh, to, uh, speak with your friends also regarding this. I'm sure that's going to help others as well. Devendra Jangar, a new student here. I hope you would like this session. Yes. All right. So let's get started. Let's study for now. So as I said, these four topics one by one, I mean three topics with the last four question we will be discussing. So let's start off with the first one. What actually is a bar graph? So before I tell you, what do you think what a bar graph is? Yes, what is a bar graph? Like mean, just I'm not asking you the mathematical definition, right? I'm just asking you as per your understanding. What do you think the bar graph is? Yes, Papia, already started, yes. Pictorial representation of group data, yes, what else? A graph with bars, representing data is using rectangular bars. Yes, Anahita, representation of the data. Right. Good try. So basically, yes, you were very close to it. It's basically a visual representation, right, of the data. Generally, the data is written, right? The numbers are given about something. So we can visually represent it. Like, let me give you an example. So here we are discussing about players and how many sixes they have scored. Like different names of the players are written over here. Sorry. Different names of the players are written over here and the sixes that they have scored, each one of them. So this way, let's suppose that the data, this data is small here. Let's suppose the data is really big. In that way, it would be really difficult for us to compare it. Even if I try to compare this, it will take me one minute, few minutes or a few seconds to, uh, to tell the answer. But if I try to visually represent this, then just by looking at it, you will be able to tell, you will be able to compare it. That's the benefit. So here we can see that this O over here, let me first tell you what exactly all this is. This O over here, that's basically the origin. And here on the x-axis, this is the x-axis. I hope you all are aware of the x-axis. What x-axis is? Yes, what y-axis is? Yes. And here, this is the y-axis. Here, number of sixes that they have scored, that is written. Here, the names of the players are written. Now, we are using rectangular bars, as you all said, yes. We make use of the rectangular bars to represent them. Like for the first player, the number is 22. So you can see the length of the bar. So you can see the length of the bar which is corresponding to the y-axis over here. Yes? 
right and similarly for another player number is 18 so it is still here you can see this number is 14 this number over here is 12 this is also 12 so bars are equal it's okay Srishti you can watch the recorded session later that's fine Wow, this chapter is your favorite. Wow, that's nice. Why Srishti? Because her name is actual. Actual name is Srishti. As I said, I always remember your actual names. Once you tell me. Yes. So, with the Cartesian plane that you are talking about, here we are talking about just two axes, right? X and Y axis. When you go in higher grades, you will learn about the planes. That time you will learn about planes. There would be three axes, X, Y and Z. Don't worry. Later on, if you opt for science, you opt for maths, you will study all these things. Learn bar graph from four standards. So these basic things you are already aware of, right? And here you can see what this is. I hope you all know this. This is the scale. Right? So here each unit length, each unit, you can see each unit, one unit, one square box. This is here on a plain slide, but if you try to, uh, you know, make this graph on a proper, on a gra proper graph sheet. So there one square, that's actually your one unit length, that is actually representing five sixes over here. Always, whenever we are making any graph, uh, the scale has to be mentioned. Yes? A lot many students are saying that this is the easiest chapter love this chapter indeed i remember when we were in school this bar graph these kind of chapters the statistics bar graphs and all or you can say the easiest ones and the one with having pictographs and all these would be the one which i used to do i used to pick up at the end like before the exam day when let's suppose i have to prepare six eight chapters or let's say ten chapters right so at that time so many years back we had to prepare the entire book for the exam so i used to leave these chapters chapters for the end that i'll prepare them at the end because these are the most easiest ones doesn't require that much of practice as compared to the other ones yes don't worry the vyakshu will be studying all this right now let's focus on this all right all right so this was about how to represent this so you see that in the numeric form if you see or if in the visual form if i try ask you to compare this obviously it will take you a little bit of time to compare if you look at the numeric form but if you see the data visually you can see how easily we can compare them right just by looking at the lens of the graph of the bars yes my young temperature in uh there is 44 degrees 44 degrees where are you from feels like talking in front of you yes i am physically there all right did i like math in childhood um yes i did like math but i would not say that oh i used to love the subject but yes i like the subject and the best thing i used to score good in this subject and i tell you one thing when you start scoring good in a, in a subject it automatically becomes your liking you automatically start liking that it happens yes Rajasthan, 44 degrees. Oh my God. Here in Delhi also, the situation is not that great, I would say. All right. So here, we have understood what a bar graph is, right? So we have the names of the players here. We have the number of sixes here. So what a bar graph is, it actually helps us to represent the data visually, right? We have seen how visually we can represent this using bars with length equivalent to the frequency of respective category. What does this statement mean? Frequency of respective category. Like for each player, the number was specified. That number is the frequency. How many times the player has scored six? Yes? All right. Alright, so that's how we can show this. So here on the x-axis, this is the y-axis. This is zero, I mean O y-axis. This is the origin O over here. This is representing the frequency of the data and this is representing the categories of the data. Alright, so I hope this is clear to all of you. I can see that you all are talking about temperature here. Yes. So we have diverted from the topic. First tell me if this is clear. Yes. I know that you want me to talk to you about the other things. Ask me anything with me. Yeah. Don't worry. We will come up with that session also. Then we can talk about rest other things apart from studies. Clear quickly. Thumbs up. Smileys. So that I can move ahead. So till now we talked about what bar graph is. Is that you have clarity about it? 
Correct, Mayank. Yes, temperature. Temperature is also, that's also data. And there also we use bar graphs. Lots of smileys and thumbs up I can see. This is clear to everyone. Awesome. Yes, I can say that you people are so talkative. You are so talkative that you make me also divert from the topic. Yes. Don't worry, we will do such kind of sessions also. When we won't be studying, we will just be talking. So you can ask as many questions as you want. But right now, let's focus on bar graphs. Yes, let's not divert from the topic. So next, we have types of bar graphs. That's the second uh, one, as I said, I'll be discussing. So what do you think? What are the different types of bar graphs? Anything that you have heard of? Correct, S. Nagendra, yes. Anything, types of bar graphs. What do you think? What are the different types of bar graphs? Yes. Uh, so that could be a single. Pictograph is different thing. The Vyakshu, that's different. Vertical bar chart, horizontal bar chart. Yes. So single vertical bar graph which represents the variation of the data like we saw in the previous example also. Double bar graph. Double bar graph. Yes, Rakesh Ra, right. Rudrakshi, double bar graph. So here also represents the variation of two sets and it helps in the comparison as well. Let's suppose I'm talking about two teams over here, right? Two teams are playing cricket and we are using, making use of the double bar graph to compare their scores. That way we can use it. Horizontal bar graph, like you can see over here in this picture, it shows the variation of the data horizontally. This is something you already learned in grade 7 and that's nice that you still remember it. See, that's why you remember we did uh, we did grid sessions also where we tell you that how the previous grade and new grade, how the topics are connected. So it's good if you remember the topics that you have learned in the previous grade. The understanding becomes a lot more easier in that case. So these are the different types of bar graphs that we have. Now let's try out a question so that we get a better understanding. The bar graph shows the usual mode of transport to school for students in a class. How many students are there all together in the class? Yes, we can see the bar graph over here. Anybody? Yes, how many students are there all together? So you can see mode of transport over here, bus, taxi, bike, bicycle, number of students are written here. So each bar is corresponding, the value of each bar, right? The length of each bar, it actually gives us the value of the number of students who are using that particular mode of transport. Yes, my young, there are, yes. Pie chart, we are not, it, it's not included in this, not in bar graphs. Bars means bars, the rectangular ones. Correct, yes, that can be used for comparison. 22, 22, everybody has solved it. Let's see what the right answer is. All right, so mode of transport, if you see number of students. From bus, we have five students, we can see taxi, one student, bike, three students. I'm writing the data in numeric form here. And bicycle and car and then walk. Number of students we have mentioned. So how many students all together? We just have to add all them up. So total students, you all were right, that's 22. That's amazing. So we know how to answer the questions if we are given a bar graph, right? Uh, all right, Palak. So you have seen that on the app also. Wow. All right, so this was about the different types of bar graphs. Now let's move ahead towards our next topic. That is group data using the bar graph. All right, so the class intervals, what is group data actually? Like how do we group the data using the bar graphs basically? The so class intervals which you could see on the horizontal axis and heights of the bars that we could see, they actually show us the, the frequency of the class interval. Like you remember the first example that I showed you where it was showing the number of six, which sixes which each player has actually scored. In the second example question that we saw, the mode of transport which is used by the, by the students. Yes. Neat Dr. Adarsh. I'm sure this is not your actual name. All right, all right. So, and there is no gap between the bars as there is no gap between the class intervals. This is, would be something different for you or you might have done this. Some of you might know this. When there is no gap in between the bars, right? What do we call it? Yes, what do we call that? Let's take an example. Like here, we have 0 to 10. This is the class interval. Frequency is 22. 10 to 20. You can see there is no gap. 0 to 10, 10 to 20. Next number is same. Yes, Ritika, that's okay, but you have missed almost half of the session, I would say. Yes, Mayang, please post whatever doubt you have. Not studied. 
Okay. So, this is something new. So, here we can see that 10 to 30, 14 is the number. 30 to 40, 12 is the number. What I am trying to show you here is, take a look at this. If I try to represent this on a bar graph, 0 to 10. Now, what we can see here is that in between the bars, there is no gap. Yes? There is no gap. So, what does that mean? No gap is here. We could see in the class interval also. Right? In the class interval also it was shown there is no gap. So, what do we call such bar graphs? Any guesses? Anybody know? This question is in your homework. Wow. So, I think now you know the answer. Now you will be able to do it easily, right? Yes. So, what do we call it? Well, it's called a histogram. Group data using bar graphs is called a histogram. One thing, let me just tell you. In histogram, there are no gaps in between the bars. Because if you see the class intervals, they were like 0 to 10, 10 to 20, no gaps. The number over here and number over here, upper, upper limit and lower limit, they are same. That's called, that's what a histogram is. Yes? Any doubts? All right. So, if you come across, yes, no gaps in histograms. That's the difference, I would say. In bar graphs, if you see, there would be gaps. But in histograms, there are no gaps. So, when we group the data using bar graphs, because bars anyways we are using, we call it a histogram. Yes. Yes, Devyakshu. So, what we are doing here is, I am talking about, here there were no gaps in between the bars. All the bars are connected. They are adjacent to each other, right? Why is it so? Because if you look at the class interval, right? Class interval, you see this? The numbers, 0 to 10, 10 to 20. 10, 10, that's same. 20, 10 to 20, 20 to 30. So, that's how, that's how we are grouping the data here. Because the class interval is like this path. Yes? I hope this is clear. So, when we are grouping data using bar graphs, that's called a histogram. Yes? Ma'am, Menti, Hogan, I shall... Yes, we will be doing Menti on all the chapters. Don't worry. So, when we are discussing it, please, please be focused. Please be attentive during the classes. Whatever questions we are giving you to solve in homework, please do that. Please do ample practice before you come for the Menti, I would say. All right, all right. So, this was about group data using bar graph. Now, as I said, after that, we will be having a poll question. So, are we all ready? Yes? Quickly. Yes, Anita. All right, all right. So, all right, let's take a look at the question. The height of 30 people in a village are represented with the histogram given below. Find the number of people with a height of at least 169.5 centimeters. So, I'm giving you 30 seconds to answer this question quickly. Yes, Ritika. Yes, loads of thumb thumbs up, smileys. Quickly, what the answer is going to be? It's asking number of people with height of at least 169.5 centimeter. Minimum height should be this much, 169.5 centimeter. All right. Everybody is saying it's going to be A. That's 5. Okay, let's check the answer. Well, it's going to be 8. 8 is the answer. Because the question was number of people with a height of at least 169.5 centimeter. At least 159.5 centimeter minimum height should be this. That means height could be more than that also. That will also work, right? But minimum 169.5 centimeter has to be there. So it could be this much as well. It can be more than that or it could be more than this also. So 5 plus 3, that's going to be 8. I hope this is clear. Yes, Shailendra is saying it's C, right? Lakshmi, clear? No doubts still here. Quickly, thumbs up, smileys if you have understood this. Yes, that's okay, Papiya. See, the main important thing is, it's not that you should be able to answer in this 30 seconds. You should know the answer, right? You know the concept. All right, all right. So, this was the last question of today's session. Now, we have a question for you that you can solve this after the session and let me know the answer in the chat comment section. So, height of 30 people in a village are represented in the histogram given below. Find the number of people with a height of less than 169.5 centimeter. Same question, the only difference is less than 169.5 centimeter. Now, I'll be waiting for your answers. So, do reply in the comment section after this session. 
and I think that this is something that we've already talked about. So link is in the description. Just reminding you, please do go check it out. You are definitely going to find it very interesting. It is amazing. So don't worry, we have got you covered. So many sessions we have lined up for you from every Monday to Friday to make you exam ready. And for any sessions, like if you have any suggestions, any feedbacks, please do post that in the comment section after this session. If you want to come, like you said, ask me anything or any kind of suggestion if you have for us. Yes, please do post that in the comment section. And I hope that everybody has joined the Telegram channel. Link is in the description for those who haven't joined it. Please go check that out and please like, share and subscribe if you feel that these sessions are actually helpful. You can share it in your, with your friends, like in your school groups or whatever, if you have any of the friends group and all, please do share it. I'm sure that it's going to help, be helpful for others as well. All right, so I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.